Hello friends. Welcome back for another episode of birds. Just kidding, but not. We're going to DIY some more bird houses, some more birds, some more spring decor. If you're sick of it, let me know in the comments below and we'll switch to something else. Maybe. I am so into birds this year for spring, but enough about that. Let's get to crafting. Of course, we're going to start with some scrap wood. And I'm just showing you the measurements of this little uh, piece of plank wood that I have. And in case you want to know how, what size we're working with. And these are just some of the ends of those awesome spindles I had that I cut off to use for other things. And these are just all in a big box in my shop. So I used my miter saw to cut them at this angle to make a frame. And I'm just showing you that you need to be sure that you're cutting the inside of your angle to your wood because I've ruined many a projects not doing that. Now my piece of uh, the plank of wood was not uh, cut perfectly, so my frame doesn't fit perfectly, but you'll see in the end that it works out just fine because we're going to decorate it up and you won't even notice that. So I'm just showing you here, I guess, how it all fits together. And it looks like there's a big gap in there, but it, there will not be a big gap when I position the pieces all together how they belong. Now I'm going to start with some white swan by DIY and uh, painted one coat on there. I do not not need full coverage because we're going to use some Mod Podge and we're going to Mod Podge a beautiful napkin with what else but birds on it. Now I'm putting one good solid coat on there and I'm going to let it dry completely and we're going to use the iron-on method. I got this beautiful napkin from my friend Myra over at Farm Fresh Designs 59 and if you do not know her please go over and check out her channel. I will try to remember to leave it linked in the description box so you can find her easily. And she does amazing, beautiful home decor. She's also a good friend of mine, but she does beautiful work. You will love her. Now, I'm taking all the plies. Be sure you remove all the plies off of your napkin or it will not work. Now, I'm going to position it where I want it, and then I'm going to take my little mini heat press. You could use a household iron just do not use steam. You're going to press firmly, but not too firmly, and hold it over each area for, you know, five to ten seconds until it's adhered. And then you're going to just use some sandpaper or an X-Acto knife or something to take off your excess. I don't have to be real pedantic about this because um, we're going to put the frame around it. But I do take a little bit of DIY dark wax and just go around the edges because we want it to look a little bit vintage, a little bit old. It's going to have a bird nest on it, so we want it to look a little weathered. I'm also going to do this to the frame. I need to seal that paint anyway, so I'm going to use the dark wax around the edges mostly. And then I'm going to take my little scrap of a t-shirt, which is my favorite thing to use because it's lint-free. And I'm going to use it to move that wax around all over to seal that paint and to give it the finish and the look that I prefer. I'm gonna do that to all four of these pieces. I don't show it because this video is already long enough without showing every single step. I did not put the wax on the pieces that I'm gonna to glue together on the corners. Now, I did the, my favorite method of gluing things together so that it stays and it's sturdy. I drilled some little holes and I took some little skewers and I some little pieces of this skewer, I cut it to make and make sure that they all fit down in there before I glue. I'm going to show you here. I make sure that the skewer will go all the way into the hole. Now I'm going to take my tight bond quick and thick. I've been using it a while, so I'm having to shake it down. I do store it upside down so that the glue always stays down toward the tip and I don't have to shake it, shake it, shake it too, too much. And then I'm going to put a little bit on those little skewers so that it gets all down in those holes. Now I'm going to press it down in there, make sure they line up good. Sometimes my my skewers and my holes don't line up perfectly and I have to maneuver it a little bit, but that's okay. They're going to stay in there good. This side I'm doing, but oops, I better put some glue on there so that it, on those corners, so that they stay in place good. Now I just use some painter's tape you're going to see when I take it apart to hold those together till they dry and it dries really quickly. I picked up these little birds at Dollar Tree. Um, they are super cute. They had that little flap for the for the wing which I'm not sure 
is going to be really beneficial for me because I'm going to use the black side. I wanted to paint this little bird with mermaid tail and prom queen mixed to match one of the little birds in the napkin I'm showing you there. So I'm mixing these two, I mix these two colors together to get a custom color. And I'm just going to dab, dab, dab and pounce it on there um, to give it a little texture. And, you know, I'm kind of going back to my days of toll painting and blending. And I'm going to use a little bit of the mermaid tail by itself on the wing to give it a little bit of darker there. Just give it some dimension and a little bit of the prom queen up on her little head. And then I'm going to take the white swan and a little bit of cake batter and a little bit of, I want to say that's queen bee, but it looks a little brighter. So it could be liquid sunshine. Anyway, I'm going to use three yellows with the white and I'm going to start out with, with the white and I'm just going to dab it all over. And then I'm going to spray a little water on my mat. And I'm going to apply a little bit of water so that I can move the colors around a little bit. Because they dry real fast because it's, you know, it's clay-based paint. And then I'm just going to use all those yellows and all those whites until I achieve the color I want. And I'm just dabbing it on. And then I'm going to go back with a little bit of the blue and soften that line a little bit. Just dab it, dab it with my finger a little bit, dab it with the brush, whatever I need to do to blend that line out a little bit. And I don't care if there's a line, but I just wanted to soften it a little bit. Dry it with my heat gun, and then I'm going to take white wax by DIY and my little t-shirt and just seal that paint in. And then dark wax with my makeup brush, which those are linked in my Amazon store in my description box. They are amazing for waxes, for stenciling, all kinds of um, crafting needs and then a little twine bow to cover up that hole makes her look adorable okay here you can see how i used the painter's tape to hold my project together until the paint dried or the glue dried and it worked wonderful my clamps didn't do not work when you're gluing corners together and i had purchased some corner clamps but they were way too small for this thick wood now, I'm going to get out the messy, messy, um, what is this stuff called? Spanish moss. And you see that little piece of bark I put to the side? I'm going to use that shortly. I'm going to just spread it all out across the bottom. This, I'm, going to, I'm going to do the work for the little bird since she's not real. And we're going to make a little nest in the corner for those precious little eggs up there. I purchased those little eggs after Christmas a couple years ago in different sizes. I think from Joanne's Fabric, maybe Hobby Lobby. And um, I've just been using them a few at a time. Now I'm just going to glue the Spanish moss to the bottom of this frame and glue the little nest down. And put. then I'm going to uh, use a little piece of a Jenga block that was just in my stash because I don't throw anything away to raise the little bird up from the frame because I don't want her sitting way down on the frame and there you can see I'm, I broke that little piece of bark up and I'm putting it in the nest because birds they just put everything in their nest whatever they need to make their nest comfy for their eggs there's that little piece of jingle block and then I'm going to put her there to make it more dimensional and then I found that little twig in my stash from a, a bag of twigs that came from Dollar Tree but you could just go out in the yard or the park or wherever and just pick up twigs and I'm going to put her on their little jingle block. Look how precious she is. She's going to be just protecting her little, her little eggs, watching her little eggs. So nobody messes with them. And then I'm going to dust off all the little crumbs and put this in my decor. I hope that you enjoyed that little bird with her nest and her little eggs, but I have more in store for you. In case you're new to my channel, 
My name is Kendra. You're watching Late Night Creations, and we are so glad to have you as part of our crafting shenanigans. But let's get back to crafting because we have more birdhouses to make. Okay, so I save all the junk, and I have saved these milk containers. And I cut the half and half one in half because I didn't have a shorter one. And so I just took my X-Acto knife and cut it all the way around. And we're going to make a base for it. You see that little piece of cardboard next to it? I just cut that the size of the bottom of it. I cut all the little spouts off with an X-Acto knife. They're just plastic. They came off really easy. And guess what? We're going to save that for another day for another project. I'm going to take a fine grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand off some of that wax. You know, there's that little waxy surface on there. Um, I'm not going to do a whole lot, just a little bit. I'm going to take weathered wood and I'm going to give all of these one coat of weathered wood. It does not um, coat completely because I did not get all the wax off. I think that I show you a little bit about how the wax doesn't, how it impedes the paint from adhering. You can see it, it repels a little bit there. Um, but you're going to see when I put the second coat on how how good it works. Now, I did both of those. Here they are all with there. You can see that little piece where it didn't get. Okay, I'm going to use cowgirl coral apothecary. And I was going to use beadboard, but I ended up using a gray on all of these. I only show you the cowgirl coral. And I'm going to paint this entire carton with cowgirl coral. And I'm not... I'm not um, giving it like a complete coat because I want them to look like, you know, they're birdhouses. Now I'm going to use my ruler to mark and I'm going to make some little shiplap lines. And I'm going to use the weathered wood and a skinny little paintbrush and my metal ruler. And I'm just going to line it up. And I don't really care if they're completely straight. And I don't care if the lines are completely solid. I do this all the time for my shiplap. It's super easy. It's super quick. And it looks really good. So I'm just going to make those little lines like that. I'm going to do it all the way around the entire carton. I don't show you the whole process. I'm just going to show you one side. And then I take a 220 grit sanding block that's been used over and over and over. And I lightly, very lightly sand. Now this, um, these cartons are hollow. So we have to remember that. Remember that when I do a lot of other projects, okay? Okay, so um, now I'm going to take a, a very dry brush and just go over those lines and around the edges with this weathered wood as well. Now I'm going to attempt to take one of the barn wood planks by IOD on their stamps. And I do this on the back just in case I don't like it. And guess what? I really didn't like it. I don't know if it was the stamp I chose or... It was just the nature of it. I tried to sand it down a little bit to see if I liked it better. I thought it would look a little bit more like wood. And I think it was maybe just the stamp I used. I decided just to leave it on the back and not go with it. I'm going to use these large craft sticks to put on the bottom of this to make a little porch on our birdhouse. And I cut them to size. I'm going to use some weathered wood and a wet wipe to stain it to, it'll look, a uh, little look weathered. That's why it's called weathered wood. Um, this is a DIY paint and it works really, really well. This is my favorite one to make like a stain. I'm going to use the Fix All gel adhesive that comes from Dollar Tree and some hot glue to uh, adhere this because it does have that waxy, you know, finish. I'm trying to figure out where to put what glue on there. Okay, so I'm going to stick that down. I'm going to hold it down for a few seconds till that hot glue adheres. And then the other glue is going to, you know, hold it down good. I'm going to put some painter's tape on to hold it down tight until it dries. And while that is happening, while that is drying, we'll work on another element, which is the roof. So I cut those to the size that I wanted them. And we're going to glue that down. Oops. Not sure why I took that off and decided I wanted to do something different. And you're going to see, I wanted to start in the middle. You're going to see me sometimes use the tight bond and sometimes just use the hot glue. 
no rhyme or reason to the things I do when I craft, remember? Okay, so I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. Because if it hangs off the edge a little bit or doesn't go all the way to the edge a little bit, that's okay. But, you know, we want it to be even. And we want to cover up that hole for sure. So I love the way this little roof turns out. And, you know, it's rustic. And so they don't all have to be the same length or any of that stuff. Now, that was the back side. The front side, I used the end with the little scallop on it. So it'll, it'll match the porch. So I'm just going to glue all those down. And I did not glue anything across the top of it. Now, I used a little round bottle to trace a circle for the hole so the bird can go in. Now, if you don't want this to fall down inside your birdhouse, I suggest you hold it. I didn't care if it fell down in there. And then here is my bag of wooden goodies. And this is that bag of sticks from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to make a perch. I'm going to use one of those little wooden pieces to make a perch. Now, I've got the Apothecary Labels from IOD. It's part of their new release. I'm absolutely in love with it. And I should not have put this on that hard um, acrylic block. I should have just put it on the, you know, the, the plastic. Because, see, I had to take them off and use them because it's a hollow center. There's not, it's not hard behind it, but it worked out okay. So I, I got wise when I wanted to do the established 2024, and there we go. Then I'm going to, you know, we it needs to look like it's been lived in, so I'm going to take the sandpaper and sand over it a little bit. I did not um, weather wood these before I put them on, so I'm going to do it now, and I'm also going to run that across the top of that. And I didn't put a piece of wood across the top of it because this was just the look I was going for. Now I'm going to take clear wax by DIY and I'm going to wax this entire piece. I do this with all three of these birdhouses in case I don't get it on camera. I, I clear wax them all. Now I'm going to make the little hanger for the top. I don't put a hanger on all of them, but this one gets a little wire hanger. This is just some wire you can get it. The hardware store, the hobby store, anywhere you can buy this stuff. And I'm just going to bend it and stick it in the, the top there. And it, it'll just stick in there and stay. I'm going to do that on both sides and pull it up there to the top. And it makes a cute little hanger. I might have made the hanger a little bit tall, but I think it looks cute. Um, these are for decor purposes only. I do not, I'm not going to put this outside for a bird to nest in. However, you could if you really wanted to. Now we're going to just poke some Spanish moss here and there and everywhere in the, in the eaves and where she's going to nest her little birds. For our next birdhouse, we need to make the base because we cut it off. Remember the one we cut shorter? So we're just going to measure them. We're going to cut these little craft sticks with some scissors. They cut really easy. We're going to measure them all the same length with a pencil, cut them. Then we're going to glue them all with some quick, quick and thick by tight bond onto that little piece of cardboard. Simple, quick, and easy. I'm not going to show you the whole process. I don't think I'm going to show you this whole process, surely. Okay. And then I actually just set a can, a jar of paint on it and set it to the side. I did not show you that I painted this gray, but it was the same process as the other one. I just painted it with some gray paint that I had in my stash. And now I cut a little piece of sponge and I glued it to the end of a wooden dowel. This wooden dowel came off of an old paintbrush those old sponge brushes. I'd save those every time. I don't throw them away. And I just glued this onto the end of it. And I'm just doing a brick lay pattern with it. And I mixed carnival red and weathered wood to make this brick color. I think this turns out really cute. I did an entire wall like this one time. 
Okay, I glued a couple of these craft sticks in the bottom to have something for our base to sit on so that it, it would stick to it. And we're just gonna stick that to it. There we go. I'm gonna take the weathered wood because I forgot to paint them before I put it on. And this is easy. And then I kinda like it because then it kinda brings the color all together. It, it works out fine, right? And I'm gonna do the sides right there. I'm gonna paint the bottom. And yeah, and this got a coat of clear too. I don't know, clear wax by DIY. I don't know if I showed you that. Now I'm gonna use these little skinny craft sticks. I get them at Walmart and I'm gonna measure them out to the, the roof. We're gonna put these on the roof and I'm gonna cut enough of them to fit all over the top. And I can't cut them with scissors. They were more difficult. I tried scissors. I tried the little, um, those little, wire cutters you see, and my miter shears were the best. Um, I am going to use weathered wood. I'm going to give them a very messy coat, like just a dry brush messy coat. And I'm going to do all of them, just the top. I don't even know if I did the sides. Whatever got on the sides got on the sides, I believe. And now I'm going to put my glue down, and I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and a little bit of the tight bond. And like I said, there's no rhyme or reason to why I do what I do when I craft, guys. I just, whatever I'm in the mood for, I suppose. Let me know. Let me know if you're consistent in how you do things or if you just do things differently every time. Yeah, this is what I'm doing on this one. At the time, I think I probably have a thought process. Maybe not. So this went really fast. I, I did speed this up, but it was a pretty fast process. Then I'm going to take the little clamps that I get at Dollar Tree and just hold this down so they don't move around until that that dries and while I'm working on the bottom part. So I put a little bit of the hot glue down because I could work pretty fast putting these on. And it, it went pretty fast. I love this. This is probably my favorite roof that I did. And then once I get them all glued down on both sides, I did both sides, um, I took a little bit of that weathered wood and I just dabbed it on the edges. I, I used a stick to kind of keep me from getting it everywhere at first. And then I decided I didn't care if it got everywhere. Um, I kind of looked, I liked that kind of rustic look. So I ditched the stick and then just started dabbing it on the edges and across the top. And then I, I did dry brush it a little bit. Now I have these little wooden discs. I have no idea where I got them. They probably came in a package of something. I traced around it. You could paint it with weathered wood and glue it on there. If you didn't want to cut it out, that would be a different look. And then you could just do some Spanish moss on it. Um, I'm going to take my, um, what is this thing? Sanding block and sand it down a little bit. Give it a little bit look. Now, I wanted it to look a little bit like that German schmear. And so I took white swan and I just dabbed it over the bricks and a little bit in the mortar. And I think it turned out super duper cute. I'm so happy with this one. This may be my favorite one. And I'm just, same same song, second verse, same as the first. Glue in the Spanish moss. And then where I had sanded on this, you could see the, the milk box behind it a little bit. So I just took that weathered wood and dabbed it on. And then I just dabbed it all over in some places to bring it kind of all together so it didn't look like I just did it in one place or two places. And it, I think it turned out really cute. And now I'm just gonna take a couple of little tiny sprigs of greenery that I had that I just pulled off of a little bush and going to put them down in there. I'm gonna take a teeny little tiny just shoestring twine bow and put in there. Cause you know, birds, they just bring everything in when they nest. And so maybe this little bird brought some little leaves and some little twine and some little grass and some little pieces of everything. I was watching a live cam of a bird in a, in a, in a nesting box. And she brought, it looked like polyfill and cotton and strings. And she had everything in there. It was so cute. Now, I had these little, they're called erasers. And they were part of a package of spools that I purchased off Etsy and I never knew what to do with them and when I was looking through my stash trying to find something cute to put on here I fell in love with this idea 
I thought this, I don't know why I thought this was so cute. Let me know if you think they, they look cute on there or if they look dumb. I can take it. Give me your, give me your honest opinion. The last birdhouse is the tall skinny one. I had this wood plank from Dollar Tree and we're gonna have it as the base and the porch. Now I needed to cut it down a little bit so I took it out to the shop and cut it with my miter saw. You could use one of those miter boxes or uh, find some way to cut it. I had these little clothes pins and I had cut this off before for a project. We had cut that off and used the tops for baby Jesus in a, in a project and so I had all of those left over and I'm going to show you how I cut them. So I have my little mini miter saw with this little tiny two inch blade. It is so precious. And so I clamp it down in here. I'm going to show you in, in just a little bit. I'll raise it up and show you. I'm going to clamp it down in there and you have to push that little button to close it down all the way. And so I'll close it down without it on and make sure the blade is going to cut right where I want it to. And so I'm closing it down, tightening it down on my little clothespin. And then, see, I'm showing you, I've got it all closed down on there. And then when I close it down, it shows me right where it is. I don't have it on yet. And I am so careful with this because I do not want to lose a finger. Okay, I can't close it down until I push that button. So now I'm going to turn it on. And now the blade is spinning. And I, and I can't pull it down until I push that button. When I push that button, down it goes. See, see it popping out? There it goes. And now it's cut. Now I'm going to turn it off. Before I do anything else and then I can loosen that up and pull those out now I have all my things ready to go now I'm going to use our layered chocolate this is a darker brown and I'm going to give it all one thin coat I'm going to dab it on the ends first on all of them and then I'm going to go back and just give it one um, coat one thin coat of this on all of them and the wood plank it's a dark it's a dark uh chocolate brown so it looks like it's really good coverage but when when you see them you're going to see that I didn't really pay that much attention to get real good coverage because I'm going to do a heavy I'm, I'm going to use vintage linen and a chippy brush and I'm going to give it one coat one thin coat I wouldn't even I started out thinking I was going to dry brush it okay so here I'm I'm acting like I'm going to dry brush it and I decided you could see too much of the brown through so you're going to see when I did that and I got too much, I was like, yeah, that's the look I'm going for. So then I went heavy with it. And then I decided, why am I wasting all this paint and time doing the whole thing when only part of it's going to show? So then I went back and I did a light coat over every single one of those. And it really went pretty fast. I'm like, oh, that looks tedious. So here, you see how pretty these look? Oh, I'm in love with that. And then I just did a little dry brush over this. this. is apothecary. This is the one I did in apothecary. And you can see I didn't even do full coverage. You can see a little bit of that weathered wood peeking through the apothecary. And then I'm very lightly dry brushing a little. I'm taking cake batter and um, queen bee. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to do, I'm just going to pounce it on there. And so it gets all in all the little nooks and crannies. While it's drying, I'm going to take cherry picked and I'm going to, I'm going to pounce it in there and get it all in all those little details. And I'm going to dry them with my heat gun so that they dry a little faster down in all those little nooks and crannies. I'm going to take cake batter and I'm going to just dry brush, do a heavy dry brush over the top so that the cake batter's on top and the um, queen bee is is in all the details. I'm going to take some of this um, that gold rub and buff and do the center of it. And then I did do a little cake batter over it because it was a little too shiny for me. Now I'm taking the French millinery millinery. I cannot say that. Y'all know what it is. And I'm going to do it over the cherry picked. And then I'm taking the silver pewter rub and buff. And I'm putting it on the center of this little medallion flower. And this is what they look like. 
I love these molds by DIY. These are probably my favorite ones that I use the most. I'm going to clear wax them, and then I'm going to do a little dark wax to outline the gold one. The yellow, gold, whatever you want to call it. Now this is where I'm going to place them. And now let's work on our roof for this one. Same thing. I'm doing a little bit of wood. It's not wood glue. It's um, tight bond, quick and thick, and a little bit of hot glue. And we're just going to place them just like so. And right over that hole, I'm just using hot glue because there's nowhere to put the tight bond. And it stays just fine with just the hot glue. I'm not sure why I used the tight bond, but I just wanted to be sure. I don't want these little things to pop off. Now this one, I just put that across there. And then I went over to my little tiny saw and I cut that little piece off and glued it right on top. I did the same thing on the other side. I did use those little clamps to hold it until it dried. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of both glues to glue these little pieces down. Same thing for both pieces. And then I cut the hole the same way I did both of the other ones. Now, I saw someone use these cocoa liners and I cannot remember who she was. I went back into my watch history, into my liked videos to try to find, I mean, I probably spent over an hour trying to find the video I watched of who used these instead of Spanish moss. I thought it was a brilliant idea. So if you have watched the video or you know who she is, please in the comments, let me know because I would love to give her credit for this great and ingenious idea because it works great, it looks good, it's just a different look. Now this is that wired jute from Dollar Tree, and I just wanted it to have a little different look than the other wire for a hanger. And like I said, the little brick the little brick one I didn't put a hanger on, and I don't think they even need hangers because we're not really hanging them, but you know, birdhouses typically hang in a tree or whatever. I have some sitting on my back porch, uh, but they don't have hangers on them. So anyway, um, I just thought this was a cute little hanger. And I couldn't get it to, you know, poke or stick into there because of the twine. So I just glued it in there. And I used my little Cricut tool to stick it in there. So let me know what you think about this one. It's a little different, but I thought it turned out really pretty. My little birds were kind of an afterthought. I picked them up at Dollar General for only a dollar a piece, and I'm just going to use the clear wax, dark wax, and white wax on them. Um, and so I'm going to use my little makeup brushes that work great with the waxes, and I'm going to give all of them um, a clear wax to start with because I don't want the other waxes to be um, as overpowering. It kind of waters them down. Then I'm going to take the white wax and I'm just going to use it as a highlighter. I just want to highlight, you know, her little head and the top feathers and the top of her tail and just, you know, all the pretty little places. And I'm going to take my little scrap of t-shirt and buff it out so it just stays down in the details. Now, these are not IOD, so the details are not as beautiful. But anywho, you can see the difference. The one on the top is the one I've used the waxes on and the one on the bottom was the original. These two little birds came from Dollar General as well and I'm going to paint this top part with cowgirl coral. I'm going to set it aside and let it dry. This is a custom mix paint with prom queen and mermaid tail and I'm going to just pounce those colors on because this is a concrete and it worked better that way. Now I'm going to paint both of them uh, with their with um, queen bee for their beaks. I'm taking a beadboard and I'm going to just go in and paint all these little dots with that to match the bottom because I'm not going to paint the bottom. I used weathered wood and just dotted the little eyes. I'm going to use cake batter and white swan kind of mixed together to just make a very faint 
color on the bottom because I really like the concrete color on here, especially with that blue, the blue and the gray. But I did want her to look a little bit like that robin that we had in that other picture. And so I just dry brushed it on. And then I just took a little bit of that white swan on my brush and went in all in the same direction, up and down. I didn't go sideways. I just went up and down and dry brushed her. And this is how they turned out. I think they turned out adorable, much better than that bright, shiny gold. I did clear wax them all as well. That's all the birds and bird houses I have for this video, my friends. I hope that you enjoyed it and you will leave a comment below and let me know what you think about the birds and the bird houses and the frames and all the things that we created today. But most of all, I want you to remember to be still and know that he is God.